I'm Photo Joseph, photographic storyteller and a Lumix luminary. Focus stacking is a technique for achieving difficult or even impossible focus in macro photography that used to require specialized hardware or software. But now, with the new Panasonic Lumix Post Focus feature, you can focus stack more easily than ever before. But first, what is focus stacking and why would you want it? Let's start with a little explanation of the limitations of macro photography. I have a setup here of a few trinkets spaced out evenly from the camera and lens, and I want to create a photo where just the middle objects, the eggs, are in perfect focus. When shooting macro at wide apertures, the depth of field is very narrow, sometimes just a few millimeters. When you stop your lens down to get a larger depth of field, more in focus, you're using less of the lens, the image won't be as sharp, and you're more likely to pick up chromatic aberration from the glass. And besides, even if you stop all the way down to gain maximum depth of field, you may still not get everything in focus that you want. Finally, even if you could get everything in focus, by the time you get your primary objects edge to edge sharp, you may have other elements mostly or entirely in focus that you frankly don't want. Focus stacking resolves all of these problems. So here's how it works. Instead of taking a single photo where you try to get everything you want in focus, you take multiple photos with very shallow depth of field, shifting focus ever so slightly between shots. Then, using software like Photoshop, you combine the sharpest parts of each frame, building a perfectly sharp image of just the items you want in focus. That's focus stacking. This is typically achieved one of two ways. Either you would move the camera a tiny bit forward between shots using a micrometric positioning plate, or it meant tethering the camera to a computer where specialized software would change the focus of the camera a tiny amount, capture the image, and repeat. Post Focus does it the second way, by changing the focus slightly between shots, but it's automated and built right into the camera. The post focus feature was designed so you could choose your focus point after you took the photo, but it turns out that it makes focus stacking really easy to do too. Using this setup, I wanna create a photo where the two eggs, which are a distance apart, are in perfect focus, but the house in front and the object in the back are soft. Let's capture a post focus shot, then I'll take the file into the computer and show you how to do the stacking. Watch carefully as I press the shutter. You'll see the camera focus on the front, middle, and rear subjects as it records the post-focus image. All I really want in focus are the two eggs, so we'll throw away a lot of these frames later. Now that the post-focus image is captured, I can tap on any part of the screen to see that element in focus. Here's the house, the first egg, the second one, and the background. Perfect. To convert this 4K post-focus file into a focus stacked image, we'll need to bring it into the computer. I'll copy the file off the card and open it in Photoshop. Once you've opened the video file in Photoshop, the timeline window will open automatically where you can click play to preview your clip. As you can see, the focus racks through and snaps from the house in the front to the eggs in the middle and eventually to the back. As I mentioned before, what I want is to build an image where both eggs are completely in focus, but the house and the background are soft. I'll grab the playhead and drag it around until I find the first frame where the front egg is in focus. When you get close, you can move back and forth one frame at a time using these buttons. Once you've found the first frame, with the clip selected, click on the scissors icon to cut the clip. Then simply select the unwanted piece and hit the delete key. I'll repeat that process for the last frame of focus. I want to ensure that the egg is sharp all the way to the back edge, so I'll zoom in to 100% and click through the frames to find the right spot. Once it's found, again a quick click on the scissors button will trim the clip so I can delete the rest of it. I'll zoom out to fit and click play to preview what's left. The focus rack now goes through the two eggs, leaving the house and the background out of focus. The next step is to export these video frames as individual files so we can re-import them back into Photoshop. While it is possible to convert the video file into a frame stack, Doing it this way gives Photoshop an opportunity to align the layers perfectly. This isn't a big concern when shooting the camera stabilized, like we are here, but it's critical when shooting handheld. Also, there can be subtle shifts in position as the lens changes focus, so again, by exporting and re-importing the frames, we're allowing Photoshop to compensate for that if needed. From the File menu, go to Export and Render Video. Choose a location, here it's already set to the desktop, and create a subfolder for the images. Mine is called Stackers. Next, you'll want to ensure this menu is set to Photoshop Image Sequence. The format can be JPEG, but if you want the utmost quality, you could select TIFF instead. 
Everything else can stay at the default settings. Click Render to continue, and Photoshop will render a new file for each frame of video. Now that that's done, the next step is to re-import the image sequence so Photoshop can create a document with each video frame as a new layer. Go to File, Automate, Photo Merge, leave the layout on Auto, and be sure to disable Blend Images Together. I'll browse for the photos that were just exported, select all of them, and click OK. Photoshop will take a few moments to assemble them into a layered file. Now it's time to blend the layers together. First, select all the layers, then from the Edit menu, choose Auto Blend Layers. With stack images selected, click OK. Photoshop will take a few minutes, the more layers you have, the longer this will take, to mask only the sharpest parts of each image, then blend them together as one complete layer. Now that it's done, we have a complete image where both middle objects, the two eggs, are perfectly sharp, while the foreground and background are nicely soft. I have another post-focus sequence already prepared that I'd like to show you. As you saw, the image we just looked at was shot with a camera totally stable, but this process can also work with handheld shots. The 4K post-focus video that these stills came from was handheld and had some obvious movement. Yet Photoshop will still do a great job of aligning those layers so they can be blended together. Now that the stacking is done, watch as I disable individual layers. If you look at the edge of the image window, you'll see some space where Photoshop had to move that layer to align it with the layer below. I'll select all the layers, and again from the Edit menu, choose Auto Blend Layers, Stack Images. OK. Give Photoshop a moment. And here you can see that once again, we have a perfectly focused image from the front mochi through the teacup to the mochi in the back, yet the pebbles just behind those are nicely soft. Focus stacking has never been easier. The new post-focus technology in the GX8 means you no longer need specialized hardware or software to control focus, which makes the entire process so much faster. Whether you're shooting creative macros or cranking out catalog work, this new capability makes focus stacking available to everyone. Also, if you haven't seen my other video highlighting all the benefits of post-focus, be sure to watch that one too.